Hello there girls and boys, welcome back to the Inex Samptum, the place where I show you all of my tricks where I pull them off line right in front of you girls and boys. And before I do anything else, let me, yes, this, that's my name girls and boys, and welcome back to the show. I look quite weird thanks to the fact that I'm using a really poor lighting system at the moment, but wherever. This is not about how awful do I look in front of the camera, this is about me showing you how to mix a song live. So. If for those of you who were here last week, we have started a new mix, mix on which we are mixing something in the likes of uh, electronic rock, if I put it in a way. Uh, this song is uh, comprised of basically, on its entirety, just synthesizers, uh, with the only exception being the drum kit, because the drum kit is being performed by Logic Pro, we are using drummer, but we are mixing and we are only using, uh, well, we are using uh, samples, okay? But samples coming from a real live drum kit. And it's playing kind of like what a real drummer would do. Okay? So, the main objective of today's mix is gonna be first confirm how the situation was last time. We worked on some of, those, of the most important elements, which was usually gonna be our bass and our kick drum. Created that uh, good and powerful sound that it's gonna serve as a foundation for the rest of the track. Now we're going to be working on the overall sound and we're going to apply effects which are quite important because we have to make we have to make people feel something while they're listening to a song not only enjoying the properly mixed sounds. So I've been talking for way too long so it's time to hit Harrison Mix Bus. See you there. So welcome back Chris and boys to Harrison Mix Bus. In front of us we have a project that we've been using for mixing the track. So before anything else happens let's give a proper listen to the track and Hopefully, we can have an idea of what kind of stuff we have to deal with during this session. So here we go, from the top. Sorry, guys, boys. That was my mistake. Okay, I like quite a lot what we got at this point. First, the kick and bass are fantastic. We get a, pro a properly sounding low end. And also, uh, I love how clicky, yet deep, the sound of the kick drum and the bass is. But I have problems. The mix sounds ex extremely lifeless. There is nothing going on. It's still boring in a way. Um, we got some elements that feel a little bit buried beneath uh, uh, the layers of different elements are part of this mix uh, and yes I'm looking at the synthesizers at this very moment because I think that my pets are quite quite obscured by some of the low end that are part of the sounds then my snare was the first thing that caught my attention the snare sounds extremely lifeless girls and boys it's quite quite small and it's not bright enough so that's gonna be our first step girls and boys so let's hit the snare here is, for those of you who are new to this uh, Mixbus experience, Mixbus is actually uh, mimicking the workflow of a uh, mixing desk. And the best part is that we have access to this, girls and boys. I'm gonna point at it. We got this. Those are channel strips that are uh, where our sounds are ins inserted in. And the best part is that those channel strips all comes with a beautiful set of built-in plugins, girls and boys, of, of, uh, of, if I put it in a way. And we got a properly designed and beautifully sounding equalizer, a great sounding and I'm quite versatile a compressor section. And if we go over here, girls, somebody, let me get rid of my face. Yes, there it is. 
if we go over to this side, there's some boys here, we got what gives the name uh, to this software, which is the Mixbus area. In here, you'll see that I got not only our uh, stereo buses, which is where all of the sounds that comprises this mix are being sent to, all of those buses actually have an extra layer of EQ, an extra layer of saturation, girls and boys, and an extra layer of compression for each individual mix bus. That's awesome. And you got the same over here, girls and boys, in the master bus, which compri it's comprised by an EQ, saturation module, module, and an overall stereo bus compressor, which all of them sound amazing, girls and boys. So, heading now towards our dreaded and awful sounding snare. Once again, I'm going to give it a listen, and I'm going to find the appropriate spot on which we're going to start looping our track back. Here we go. Probably here. Okay, I can see the problem. We got a really, really, really uh, lifeless sound in the snare because what I'm going to do is first I'm going to bring back my face because I want to have some form of human interaction with you, or some boys. Here is hello. Now I'm going to um, first let me see. Because I don't want to uh, EQ the the sound right away. Um, let's add a little bit of saturation, girls and boys. Okay, we're gonna insert a new plugin, and it's not gonna be a fancy one. It's just gonna be a little bit of saturation, and I'm gonna use yes, Sound Toys, girls and boys. You know that I love that company, and we're gonna go over uh, to our decapitator. There it is, in all its glory, girls and boys. Awesome. It is, but just one thing that is important. If you look at this area over here, girls and boys, we got our uh, chain of command or the, uh, the the how the signal is gonna flow through the whole thing. And at this point, I put my equal my uh, distortion over here, girls and boys, and it's after the fader, which means that it's gonna be affected by the positioning of my fader. That's not what I want. What I want want it to do is the following. I'm gonna grab my uh, uh, decapitator plugin and I'm gonna put it over here, girls and boys, on top of the fader. That means now that this thing is gonna be up applied to the whole sound before the fader. And you can see how the order follows, girls and boys. First EQ, then compression, and then decapitator. At this point, I am not convinced yet. I'm gonna put the decapitator to be the first in the chain. Bam. Why? Because we're going to do something interesting, girls and boys. First, and I have to go bigger because it's important. First, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a much more interesting sound by applying distortion, girls and boys. We're trying to bring some of the high end that makes the snare sound like a snare, okay? Then we are going to EQ that sound, already distorted sound, to taste, to make it fit inside of our sound, of our song. And then we're going to compress it to control and enhance some of the newly added layers of distortion and properly enhanced frequencies. Okay, this is a neat trick, girls and boys, and believe me, when it comes to dealing with signal flow, the order, order totally affects the final product. So don't be fooled by that. Coming back to Mix Bus. So here we are. So first, after speaking like 2000 hours, it's time to bring some sound action. So I'm gonna solo. And let me confirm that you can still hear it. Yes, you can still hear my horrible voice. I'm gonna solo the sound of the snare just for me to get familiar to what kind of effect we're gonna have on the capitator. Then I'm gonna bring back the rest of the mix and we're gonna start to mess around with it to taste. Here we go. I love it, girls and boys. <laughs> Uh, yes, you might wonder why on earth is he gonna leave it like this. First, I wanna give it a try to different circuits before we make a decision, but I, I am already liking this guy. So, once again, I want you to. Oh, yes. I want you to pay attention to this section over here, girls and boys. This is where the style, or this is how the. We're gonna affect and change completely the algorithm inside of the capitator, which means that we're gonna get a completely different circuit and a completely different distortion sound. So we are using A at this point and it sounds like this. 
Now let's give it a shot to E. N. T. P. Now, it sounds awful, I know. But I am divided between A and N. And why is it possible for me to like this kind of sound? I don't like it, girls and boys, but I can see the potential. We're gonna use this guy, the mix knob, okay? And the mix knob is gonna allow us to apply some sort of parallel uh, e, uh, 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 modulation, parallel compression, in this case, parallel distortion circuit on our sound, which allow us to select as how much of the ultra distorted sound we want to be part of our mix in comparison to the original sound, which is known as dry, okay? Whenever you see something like this in any plugin, it means that if you set it to dry, it's gonna be the sound without any form of effect on it, and wet, the whole effect. No original sound, no original signal is, signal is part of the sound. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring back the rest of the mix, I'm gonna press play, and I'm gonna back off this thing to test, okay? I'm gonna leave it on end, because I think that's the best one. Here we go. I think that A is the winner, and probably you saw it, girls and boys. As soon as I turned on the capitator, we're starting to get a much more brighter sound. Of course, I used the tone knob uh, uh, that comes with the capitator to add a little bit more brightness to the sound of our of, of our snare, and it started to sound interesting. It's not perfect yet, girls and boys. I am just trying to make the sound of the snare interesting. We are not even uh, working on a or on sitting it in a position inside of our mix. We are just uh, trying to make it interesting or something. So now what I think we should do, I'm gonna try this punish button, which is gonna overload the system. It's gonna give us an even much more saturated uh, sound. Let's see what happens or something. Here we go. It's super obvious, Gerson Boys, at this point. I love it. This plugin is fantastic. So yes, you should definitely get it. It's not that expensive, Gerson Boys, and sound, time, sound toys have plenty of sales around the years. So see, keep an eye open on this, because believe me, these plugins are just amazing. So now that we got a, a cool sounding and a great starting point uh, sound, it's time to come back to our trusty mix bus, and we're going to hit now the EQ section, Gerson Boys, okay? So let me just do something here. Yes, the EQ section. This means that we're going to start to make our sound fit inside of our mix. And also we're going to enhance a little bit. At this point, I feel that my uh, snare is a little bit too dark to my taste. For my taste, sorry. And uh, and it's now that we applied the decapitator, we get a, a great sounding upper end and great sound in mid range but it's a still a bit boxy and by boxy i mean it's not as tight sounding if it makes any sense to you girls and boys so i'm gonna first solo the snare again and we are gonna mess around first with our low filter low pass filter okay this section over here here we go
Now let's see how it will sound like in the context of the mix. Good, good, good. What I did here was removing some of the extra low end energy that it's coming out of we or us applying the capitator as the first element in our chain. When you apply distortion, you're actually adding distortion to everything. And therefore, you are adding more layers of harmonic content to all of the different sounds that were part of the original source. Okay, regardless of what uh, what's the sound or what what kind of or, or where does your sound sits on the uh, frequency range, any recording in the world is going to have more uh, more frequencies as you might think. The thing is that they might be a little bit extremely low. Uh, in volume in comparison to the fundamental sound let's get let's in this case this the snare and those tiny uh, sound waves as soon as you start to apply compression as, as soon as you start to apply eq you can bring up stuff that shouldn't be there so it's important for you to remove stuff that might not be there or shouldn't be there and alex great to have you here great to hear from you man hopefully i can teach you something out of this so continuing with the mix we are going to now uh, clear up some of the mid-range. I don't want to deal with the low end at the moment on the snare because uh, it might not be necessary. You will see why later. First, let's clear up some of this uh, snare sound by removing some of the stuff on the mid-lows. I will explain why later. So first, we're going to sweep around. We're going to find the, the problematic frequency and then we're going to fix it. Here we go. That one, that's awful. So I'm gonna bring back the rest of the mix and I'm gonna be lowering little by little the knob, okay? We're gonna reduce the gain on that particular frequency band. Here we go. Hopefully you managed to see what I did here. This was actually impressive. It might not be the most uh, uh, in your face effect ever, but what I did was the following. I'm gonna bring back my pointer. First, I found that this frequency here was extremely problematic. We were getting, uh, we, our snare was a little bit too dark sounding for what the, the context of the mix is. So, those problems were not coming from the low end, believe it or not. They came from the mid lows. Those frequencies tend to be quite difficult for our human ears to be understood. So I had to find the one that it's the most problematic one, problematic one, and then I back it off little by little. Of course, always doing it inside of the context of the mix. Course, extremely important. Never mix using the solo button. The solo button is just there for you to find the stuff clearly and then come back to the rest of the mix and Make it happen. Bring magic to the world through the power of music. So we got it. We finally got it. And now I'm going to make the sound of the snare brighter. Even more than it is at the moment. Because I want it to be able to cut through the mix without the need of me actually pushing the fader up. Again, let's take a look at the equalizer. This time we're going to be hitting the mid lows. The mid, the mid highs. Okay, here we go. Again, solo first. This is going to be interesting or some ways because I am divided between this, which is a 3.73 and 3, almost 4,000 hertz, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot there and we're going to start to add a little bit of energy. Here we go! I love it, girls and boys. This is exactly the sound that I like. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of weight to the kick, to the snare, sorry. And the way to do it, it's gonna be by doing the following, girls and boys. 
I'm gonna attack the low range here. Here's somebody we're gonna use these guys, the low lows, and give me a second because the dog is trying to get out of the studio. Give me a few seconds, here's somebody's coming back to you. Yes, that happens, you know, when you have a pet in the studio, sometimes it wants to hang around with you and sometimes it just wants to mess around with you. So, coming back, we are going to add weight to the sound of our snare by working with the lows. So, first, I'm going to solo the sound of the snare again and try to pay close attention to how punchy and how ballsy, if that makes sense to you, the snare sound is going to become. Here we go. There is. That's a good one. So, we're gonna start to add little by little. Here we go. Good, 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 good. Now, I love how this nurse sound, and I hope that you saw how different it is every time that I get rid of the equalizer. As soon as I turn the equalizer off, we got a much more interesting sound in the snare. Uh, sorry, we got a much duller sound in the snare. But as soon as I bring it on, wow, the snare pops, and it's cutting through the mix without any effort. And again, I haven't touched the feather yet. Now I think that we need to add a little bit more of a compression, girls and boys. Well, a little bit. Now, we have to apply a, a, a sheer load of compression, girls and boys. Because it's not... Um, how can I put it? We need to add and enhance the detail and the different... Uh, uh, trying to control the dynamic range of the snare, okay? So, first, this guy, Mixbus, has three different uh, compressors, girls and boys, built in. We got the leveler. We got a compressor circuit and a limiter circuit. All of them are basically compressors, but they act and react completely different depending on the kind of material and depending on the kind of application that you will be using them on. So I recommend you to experiment with everything because one would work for a snare one day and the other might be the perfect choice for the next mix. So don't, don't, don't be afraid of experimenting with this kind of plugins. So here we go. I'm gonna first give it a shot to, to, le to, to leveler and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we are gonna change to something else. And a quick reminder, threshold is gonna be controlled by this fader. This knob over here controls the tech and this guy over here, it's controlling the gain, the makeup gain, okay? Because remember, when you compress, you're gonna have a loss in volume and you have to compensate that loss by applying a little bit of extra of extra gain which allows us to have our sound compressed at unity gain which means it's exactly the same level just compressed here we go Now, let me explain what happened here, girls and boys. Every time that I, I am working on a compressor, I first solo the, the, the sound that I'm gonna be compressing, okay? Then, I first move and attack the fader or, or the threshold controller to see how far do I have to take it before we start to get a compression, uh, some form of compression. Where do I have to leave it? It's coming as a result of me making use of both uh, parts of my body, girls and boys. And no, I'm not talking about those parts. I'm talking about my eyes and my ears. I am using my eyes to see a visual representation of the compression taking place. That's why this thing comes quite in handy in this moment, girls and boys. Those are the measuring system. And 
I use my ears to see what kind of difference we are getting out of this amount of compression being applied on our source. Then, I found something horrible happening, Gerson Boys. We were ringing way too much low end in a way that I didn't like. And we worked quite hard to get rid of certain frequencies that weren't contributing in any way, shape or form, Gerson Boys. So, this is what we are going to do, Gerson Boys. We are going to... Sorry, then I... In order to solve that problem with low end, and I saw something that I didn't like, so that's why I got distracted. I will explain this as soon as we finish with this. In order to control and get rid of those low end frequencies, I just had to make the attack of the compressor way, way slower. That allowed the whole transient to come in and being compressed once the transient cut in, and we just enhanced the the, the uh, not the attack, the release tail and the decay of the snare hit, making as a result the snare the snare sound to be fatter and much more punchy. Okay, now here's the problem that I just realized. As you can see here, we left the <laughs> the the low knob all the way cranked up, cranked up all the way up, and is that a problem? No, it's just that we forgot and we sculpt the sound using this parameter set as it is and let's see now how it sounds in the context of the mix after we compressed that might be the reason why i was struggling with the low end while compressing but i think that we got a really cool sound in uh, a snare sound anyway so here we go Awesome, isn't it? Wow, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I love mix boss girls and boys. And remember, we are only using the built-in plugins. We're only the only one that it's not part of a mix bus is just the decapitator uh, circuit, which is just a distortion. And I can assure you that you can do the same trick using mix bus. More on that in a different video, girls and boys, because it's it's important and it's kind of difficult to explain it while I am mixing a song. So now, what's the next point of this endeavor? I'm going to add a little bit, a little, 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 little bit of um, distortion and parallel compression to my snare sound. Yes, I know that we said that we applied a compression a circuit on top of our snare. Yes, but we can add even more. So first, we're going to engage our sense over here, girls and boys. This. And this is controlling where am I sending each of those signals two when it comes to the different mix buses as you can see the snare and the drums are being sent to both well the snare is sent to the drums bus and the kick drum is being sent to an special bus that i explained in the previous session which only contains the kick drum and the bass and i can if i want send the drums uh, send the kick drum to the drum bus how does that does that does this works that's a question i'm glad you didn't ask there is a video in this YouTube channel on which I explain to you how this whole template works. And also, you can download this template for free. So you can use it for any of your mixes. I totally recommend you to use it because it's fantastic. It's extremely well, well developed. And yes, I explain how to use it in that particular video. So find it somewhere inside of our YouTube channel. Now, continuing with this session, we're going to apply a parallel mixing. Okay. And parallel mixing is going to be done by this. I'm going to remove first my face out of the gate, of the, get my face out of the way. Now that you don't see me, you would be able to see this. I'm going to use this guy. And we are going to send our uh, snare sound, a copy of it, to a particular mix bus. And that mix bus is going to be over here. Let me just position this thing. We're going to have, we're going to be done with this. Now we have over here, girls and boys, in front of us, we got all of the parallel compression systems that I already have created that comes part of this uh, mix bus template. We're going to be working, specifically speaking, on these two guys. We're going to be working on 
Comp Snare and Comp Nasty. Two, look, the two of them are completely different from each other. And the first one that we're going to play is going to be Nasty. Nasty is an over-the-top distortion uh, system and two overly compressed sound. It's going to be great to get our sound, the snare sound, to punch and cut through the mix even further. So this is how it works, girls and boys. First, we're going to go back to our sense. And in here, I'm going to select, turn on first the synth, the comp, uh, sorry, not this one, nasty. Here it is, nasty. And I'm going to back it off all the way down. From here, I'm going to, now you know what, I'm going to leave it up, all the way up. Because here, we're going to be controlling and we're going to be adding little by little the sound of the nasty compression and over the overdriven sound by upping and bringing up that fader. Okay, so here we go. Pay close attention to the sound of the snare. That's going to be important. Here we go. Isn't it fantastic, girls and boys? We got a beefier, much more clear sound in there just by adding this tiny bit of energy using this uh, over the top compression and a slash distortion circuit on the snare. Really easy, really fantastic. How does it work? Super simple, girls and boys. We, got, we just had to crank up the drive uh, system on this uh, mix bus. Then I just compressed the living stuff out of the signal, and that was it. Nothing fancy, nothing interesting. It's all about understanding how something like this works. Now, we got a really cool sounding uh, snare. It's time to add reverb because it's extremely, extremely dry. My, my, I'm getting thirsty just by listening to this track. So let's find our trusty effects mix bus, which is here, girls and boys. We got them here. Yes, we're going to be using these guys here, girls and boys. We're going to use hole and plate at this stage, girls and boys, because those are going to be our two reverbs for the night, for tonight. Would we need more reverbs? There's a chance that that might happen. There's a chance that we might only need two. But the only way to know is by messing around. So, first, let's apply a little bit of hole reverb. I'm going to, again, going to insert a reverb, a plugin, and it's going to be... Um, which last time I used, I'm going to show you something that you haven't seen there, because I was already gravitating towards a little plate, but no, we're going to actually, we're dealing with a whole reverb. So I'm going to apply, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, slit it, verb set classics, yes, this guy, hopefully it would load, yes, it load, it loaded, good. So, now, again, I'm going to remove this guy, and we're going to make sure that our plugin is pre-fader. That way, we can control the amount of the, of the e reverb without having to destroy the whole composition of our reverb structure. Now, let's first select a whole reverb, and since I am feeling lazy at the moment, let's use a preset to start with. We're going to modify it, you will see. So, let's give it a shot to this. Drum depth, pow! It's already loaded, and since we are going to be working with this as a parallel mix, it's important for you to always make sure that the dry wet it's always fully wet. It might be a slippery, but that's what well, whatever. If you like Bon Jovi, you might have uh, understood my horrible joke. But here we go. Now, let's see what this reverb circuit sounds by sending most of our drums there. I'm going to be sending first a little bit of a snare and then we're going to start to play the reverb to the rest. So, as you can see, in my template, I already have organized uh, everything following this structure. First, we got in this area instrumentation. This second area, we got uh, compression and dynamics and this reverb and time based effects. Okay? So, that means that we will have to be focusing on this section for now. First, we're going to turn down the hole, 
and we're going to back it off and we're going to start to add it little by little. So here we go. First is there. I like it, girls and boys, but I don't like how low the lows are, so I'm going to back off. The lows on the reverb, okay? Don't get me wrong. Also, I might extend a little bit the decay, just a tiny bit, to ex extend a little bit the, the release tail, just a tiny bit. Let's see what happens now. Okay, I can see where the problem lies now. This the reverb, it's good. I like what it's doing to the mix, but I think the problem that we mentioned before, it's starting to bite us, uh, <laughs> to grab us by the, the rear. So what I'm gonna do is gonna back off this because this is ridiculous. Girls and boys, I just realized that this is a mistake on my side. This is the high pass filter. That was stupid. Sorry about that. We're gonna back off this guy. <laughs> this guy is the thing that we have to change. We added a little bit too much low energy, L mid lows. So I'm gonna remove a tiny bit. There it is. Should be good. Good, good, good. Now it's time to add a second reverb circuit, which is gonna be the plate. I'm gonna do the same. We're gonna head over here once again to our trusty Mixbus area, and I'm gonna insert a new plugin. Again, it's gonna be this time around coming from a different company. Let me see, let me see, which could be a good one. Um, let me see something that it's good okay, obviously there are many things that are also awesome, bad uh, let me see let me see give me a second Christmas because this is the problem yeah oh jeez Murphy I'm gonna give it a shot to plug and mix and we're gonna go to the their detail plate where is it here is detail plate bow Awesome. Here is your symbols. And again, let's make sure that our mix is fully wet. Done. And we're going to start to mess around with the time by first making sure that our snare, our snare, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's getting something good out of this. But first, let's again, make sure that we are actually uh, setting the reverb to be before the fader. Now, let's mess around with it. I'm going to send a little bit of reverb little by little. Once again, we're only applying the reverb on our snare, so keep an eye open for that. Here we go. Awesome, 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 Gerson boys. 
I think I'm gonna back off a tiny bit the plate, but I love the texture that we're getting. I love how this thing is starting to sound like. And as a final trick, I'm gonna apply distortion on both our <laughs> reverb circuits, girls and boys. You might be, what? What kind of heresy is that? This is not heresy, girls and boys. It's just adding flavor to our food, girls and boys. It's boring to always have vanilla. It's time to make our life more interesting by spicing it up. Yes, that was a Spice Girls reference, girls and boys. So probably I, I, I might be showing my age again. So let's add some distortion to our yeah our reverb and again this is how it's gonna apply look first and well look again at this section i want you to note that we are following the same structure girls and boys the drive setting it's after everything happened okay so that doesn't uh, it's not going to make any form of problem with us leaving our order or the sig of the signal flow as it is at the moment. So it's time to spice up the sound of our reverbs. I'm going to solo the sound of our snare and also the sound of our reverb, the whole reverb first. So we can have an idea of what kind of effect this drive setting is going to apply to our reverb. So here we go. There is Gerson Boys. Oof. Now let's do the same to the plate. And again, these are not extremely in your face when it comes to how clear the effect is in the sound of a mix. But we're starting to make the sound of our mix to feel natural, to feel organic, Gerson Boys. We're making it interesting. This is important. I will have to do bigger. Effects are not supposed to be in your face 90% of the time, Gerson Boys. They are supposed to be subtle. The idea of using effects and applying compression and EQs and stuff like that, it's to make, first and foremost, the sound, uh, the sounds com the sound coming from the coming from the different elements of our mix to feel that they belong together, that they are part of the same thing. That's one thing. Secondly, those effects are, and especially I am looking at you, delay reverb, flanger, modulations and time-based effects in general and sometimes dynamics and EQs those effects are supposed to be used to enhance the uh, emotional appeal of the song to create a larger than life sound and to enhance and create that atmosphere to involve or to ensnare our uh, listener in a completely different world thanks to the fact that they're listening to music that means something emotionally speaking to them that's the whole point of using and applying effects it's not to put them in the forefront and look see how amazing my reverb plugin is no it's there to make and enhance the emotional appeal and the emotional load of your songs and your tracks so always remember that when you are mixing let's hit the final stage of this session girls and boys so we're gonna apply again distortion, but to a different circuit, a different um, reverb circuit. This case is gonna be up in this moment. It's gonna be applied to the plate reverb. I remember this is the last reverb that I we applied. This guy. So listen to how this snare sounds now. Here we go. Just for the fun of it, I'm gonna send my hi-hats and my overheads to both the whole reverb and the plate. But we're gonna do it little by little, girls and boys. I'm gonna do it extremely aggressively. So don't uh, don't be scared of me just moving faders uh, at the speed of light. So here we go.
Now that we have established the reverb and the overall vibe of our track, I feel that Meissner is a little bit too high in volume when compared to the rest. So this is going to be the final point of, of this session, girls and boys. So keep an eye open to the fader here, this guy. We're going to be messing around with it, trying to find the right spot and the sweet spot in general for our snare. Here we go. There you have it, girls and boys. This was quite, quite a huge improvement over the original track. We did exactly what we expected to do, which was finding and designing a great sounding snare and adding and creating the overall vibe of our space, aka also known as reverb, girls and boys. So we applied the, we set the foundation of the track, and the track from now onwards is going to be all about making it sound interesting you saw what i did at the end i mess around with the balance between the different elements in the in the in the kick drum or the kick drum the drum kit i don't know why i always mix those words uh it's mix them up and i just mess around with the volume especially when it came to the relationship between the hi-hats the overheads and the snare those were the most problematic areas at this point i feel comfortable about the position of those elements and from now onwards, the mix is going to just get better and better. Hopefully, I managed to teach you something new today. And if you want to know more or if you want to know uh, anything more related to Mixbus, there are plenty of videos on this, on this YouTube channel on which I explain to you many of the things that will help you to create better music and to understand how this workflow uh, goes or flows. Because I know, girls and boys, uh, Mixbus is not the friendliest of the... Of the Digital allow the workstations out there, but it's amazing just because it follows and actually feels and behaves as a mixing desk with. And that's something that I love. It's a completely different mindset and it allows you to mix music and look at music in a completely different way. So I extremely recommend you to get it, use it, and believe me, <laughs> the sound that you get out of it is fantastic. Something that as soon as you load the, the files into it, you're already getting some, something interesting. So before we go, girls and boys, I would like to invite you to Super Channel by listening to music and first, of course, as usual, I mix them up. Follow us on social media such as Instagram because that's the best way for you to get a hold on us on a much more personal basis. And also following us and listening to our music on Apple Music or Spotify because uh, not only is good music, it's also a great way to annoy your enemies. And now, girls and boys, as usual, as every single time I meet you, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell me what to dream about. And remember that we'll see you when we see you.